Here's the basic idea. So, you know, suppose you get given an argument and you're trying to assess its validity, yeah? Well, the goal is to see if using, when using sanctioned inferential rules, we somehow reach the conclusion, right? We have some premises and then we use some inferential rules. At this point, we've learned three of them and we see if we can get to the conclusion. If we're able to do so, then we know that the argument is valid. Why? Because the inferential rules that we employ, they're sanctioned in some way. And they're sanctioned by virtue of their being truth preserving. That is, these rules are such that if you give it a true input, you'll get a true output. Right? And sometimes I like to think of it as a maze. You know, it's, it requires a bit of problem solving and there are a lot of corners you have to take. Sometimes there might be multiple paths to the same outcome and that's fine. But it's sort of like, you know, a game where, you, where you're trying to solve for something. Okay, any questions so far? Hopefully by the end of today, you will know how to do a derivation in formal logic. It's really not that difficult. So I mentioned there were some rules. Here are three rules so far, MP, MT, and MTP. In terms of derivations, there are quite a few types. For the sentential logic part of our course, we'll focus on three direct conditional and indirect derivations. For today, we'll focus only on direct derivations. Next time we'll do both conditional and indirect. Indirect derivation is another way of saying proof by contradiction. Those in maths or perhaps computer science may have heard of that. Okay, this is just for reference. I think the best way to start learning derivations is to do a demonstration. Okay. So let me just do this one for you. And there are actually, you know, a few different ways you could do this. And maybe I'll do it in two different ways. So what do we have here? Well, we have an argument, don't we? We have an argument here. How many premises do we have? Guys, how many premises do we have? I just want to make sure that we're all looking at the same thing and that we know what's going on. So there are indeed three premises. This argument is presented in a slightly different form than maybe what we're used to. They're presented side by side. This is premise one. This is premise two two, this, this is premise three, and this is the conclusion. Now you might want to start off a derivation by labeling it that way, especially if you have a few more premises, but it's not necessary, nor is it part of the derivation itself. But there you go, there are three premises and it's denoted by PR. Here's what you do. You want to show that the conclusion that is not P, follows from the premises, right? So the first step to any derivation is writing the first show line. You write one, then you write show, and then you write down your conclusion, which in this case is not P. That's the very first step. What this does is sets you up to show the conclusion, okay? Well, what's the next step? Well, again, like a maze, you can take different routes, but let me show you sort of the most, oops, what's going on there? Let me show you the most basic way, which is to pull your premises down. 
So you might say, okay, looking at premise one, P entails not Q. And then looking at premise two, it says R entails not not Q. And you look at premise three and it says R. Well, I hope you can see that there's actually something we can do with premise two and premise three, namely modus ponens. So one thing you might want to do is say pull premise two down and say R entails not not Q. And you justify it. You justify it by saying, oh, this is simply premise two. And you might do the same with premise three, which happens just to be R. And you say, well, it's not like I'm pulling R out of thin air. I have R because it's part of my premises. Line four, well, you just say, looking at lines two and three, you can do a modus ponens and it would give you not, not Q. And now you want to justify it. You say, two, three, and P. Now you don't have to write modus ponens out in its full form. You can just write MP. And we've done an inferential move so far, right? But we haven't yet reached our conclusion. There's more to be done. And I hope you can now see that we haven't used premise one yet, but premise one is going to be really handy for us next. Let's look at premise one and let's pull it down. P entails not Q. That's premise one. Well, we can see that line four and five can be used to give us something. It can be used to give us not P by way of modus tollens. So four, Five, M, T, and voila, that's our conclusion. But we're not done yet. We have to finish it off. How do we finish off? Well, this is part of the convention. So if you take a look at line six, we see that's the conclusion we want to show. We want to show that because it's also denoted by our line one. So line one says, okay, let's try to show not P. Line six has given us not P. To finish it off, we should write six, citing line six, that is, and writing DD. DD stands for direct derivation. And this signals that you've completed the derivation to show line one, that is not P. But after you write six DD, you have to Number one, cross out the show line of what you've shown and then box it off. Why am I crossing out the show line? Well, prior to crossing it out, you're telling whoever's reading this derivation that you're trying to show not P. But by virtue of writing 6DD, you've actually shown it. So you're no longer showing not P, you have not P. The way that anyone would read this is you have already not P on line one. And when you're boxing it off, it's saying that whatever was between lines two and six, it's not available to you anymore because you've used it to show line one. And I'll talk more about boxing off when we do stub derivations. But that's really the derivation. That's all that there is to it. So there are a few things to note here. Okay, the first thing is I've indented after a show line. And you should indent after every show line. Another thing to know is I put my justification here to the right. Okay, 